loading. Uh, I'll also give you guys time to join the uh, video, the live stream, if you guys are here. Um, looks like everything is going going well. <clears throat> By the way, everyone, I hope you this are still loading. Uh, I'll also give you guys time to join the uh, video, the live stream, if you guys are here. It looks like. Um, one second. Looks like everything. All right, I had the live stream going on a different tab and I, they just started playing. So the preview actually works really well. Good little test right there. Anyway, guys, I hope you're having a great, great Easter uh, weekend. Also, today's Earth Day, so uh, plant a tree. But um, yeah, pretty exciting stuff. A lot falling on this weekend. My brother's birthday was just two days ago. You know, it's just a lot going on. Um, but uh, the, now we are going to be focusing on the weekly trade review, and it's actually really exciting. This is the 40th weekly trade review. And uh, so, yeah, we've been doing this for 40 weeks um, every Monday. Well, at first it was kind of just, you know, recording locally and then publishing it. Usually I would publish either Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday. It was one of those three days I would publish it. But as of, I think, the last five or six weekly trade reviews, we've been doing every Monday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, um yeah, that's that's really cool. It's working out really well. Um, learning about a lot about live streaming. Um, there's way more to learn. So <clears throat> just exciting stuff. And it's also cool because it gives you guys the chance to ask me any questions directly. So let's get started. For those of you do, who don't know, my name is Alex Winkler, and I've been trading for a little over six years. Uh, at first, the first three years, I would say I was living in New York City and I was trading equities and then I was traveling, I was living in Florida, I was doing all sorts of stuff. And then as of the last two years, roughly, um, I started trading cryptocurrencies and I applied all of my equities trading strategies to the crypto market and I was able to grow our new crypto fund very consistently. We are averaging about 11% per month, um, a little on the lower end, I would say, but um, Overall, especially these last few weeks, we've been getting over 5% per week. So that's, that's really exciting. And uh, I can't wait for the bull market uh, whenever that's going to come, you know. But uh, the bear market is just as good as a time to trade than ever. There's plenty of opportunities. We're mostly doing, um, you know, day trades. Every now and then I'm looking for a nice swing trade. Uh, we've been having a nice bullish rally. And we're going to talk a lot more about the charts and uh, specifically Bitcoin. Uh, look at some BTC USD shorts and some altcoins at the end of this video. But let's let's start this video off by talking about um, a few things. So one thing I really wanted to highlight in this weekly trade review is you don't need to make perfect trades to be consistently profitable. And this is something I say all the time, right? You could you could be right only 50% of the time and still be um, consistently profitable. Based on my uh, statistics, <clears throat> I'm only profitable around 63% of the time. So, you know, I would say, yeah, 63% of the time of my trades. So if I have 100 trades, 63 of those trades are typically winners. Um, and even even though that's just, that's just, you know, it doesn't seem like that much, right? Um, some of the best traders out there are only profitable around 70% of the time. So my goal is to get over that 70% limit. Um, I'm still fine tuning a few things for the crypto market. Uh, right when I got started with crypto trading, it was a bit different. I was way too aggressive because as an equities trader, the market, um, I typically only traded the market open for, you know, 30 minutes and I'd be in and out. Um, crypto is a lot more stretched out and you have to kind of, um, yeah, adjust your trading in that regard. So um, I had to, there's a lot to learn for me and um, I want to share everything with you guys. And that's why I'm doing all these uh, video lessons and things like that. Anyway, um, we're going to talk about the three trades that I made last week, two of which were day trades. And then one of, um, one of them was a swing trade. So let's actually go over to the chart right now and uh, look into all that fun stuff. How do I switch screens? That is the only question. Here we go. Okay, so this is actually the video that was just playing. It's pretty cool. You can set a reminder and then um, it just starts playing. It's pretty sweet. Um, so let's let's get started. And the way I usually get started um, is going into the trade journal overview, weekly overview. And I heard from you guys uh, last time that some of you couldn't read this. It was too small, especially on mobile. So um, I'll actually go over to my exact weekly trade review. And this is where I have all my weekly trades outlined. Um, so hopefully this is a little bigger. I still don't really know how to zoom in 
during a live stream. I know how to do it when I'm editing, but not during a live stream. So I hope this is a little better. So we'll use this one right now. Um, anyway, you can see the, the week started off, you know, fairly slow. I had a nice trade on Monday, nothing too crazy, 200 profit, pretty sweet. And then a small scratch on Tuesday. But then really what um, summed the week up was a swing trade that I opened on Wednesday. And I was planning to hold this a few days, but uh, we never really had that run up like we like I wanted to. And then in the trading discord chat room, I even said, you know, I'm probably going to lower my my, uh, my exit, my ideal exit, and that's what I did. And we actually got out at a near perfect spot. This was crazy. Um, uh, it doesn't always happen, but it was really cool. The entry though on this trade was just horrible. So I could have easily got out and got another one or 2% uh, very easily out of this trade, um, but I was just way too aggressive. I chased a little bit um, because I missed my entry over and over again. And then I eventually got an entry and then guess what happened? The price went down. So horrible entry, good exit. Um, but overall, just, you know, a pretty decent trade. Uh, so we're going to review all these right now. Uh, also, I had some questions on how to, um, you know, extend these weeks. And I have a whole document uh, a tutorial video series on Trade Journal. But overall, all you do is you just highlight this. I like to leave a space for personal kind of preference. So um, you know, it's more easy on the eyes. Then all I do is I copy the last week just like this, and then I remove all the information, right? Just like this, information is removed. You can see all these averages went down again. Uh, and then all I need to do left is, you know, make it the new week. So I changed the first one, and then I don't change these manually. I just drag the first one down and then uh, Google Sheets automatically does that for me. So boom, now we have a new week. And if you look at the chart, you'll see that this is officially kind of like flatlined. And this is just the new week. And that is exactly the same as if you come over here and you see this. This is just a snapshot before I did that. So boom, this is going to be the new week we have ahead of us. Um, so let's see what kind of cool opportunities we'll find in the market. Um, yeah, actually, let's go back to this chart. It's kind of cool. Um, like I said, this only starts in 2019. I have moved over all the other information, and I don't think I'm going to do that until we have the Trade Journal website live, which we are working on, and it's really cool. And if you are a Python developer, I left a link uh, in the comments below. So um, check out that if you would like to help on the project. But um, we basically had half of 2018 also documented, and there was a nice little jump up here. It was it was quite a sweet little jump. Anyway, uh, we have a pretty consistent upwards trend, right? Uh, the biggest thing I would say about this is there's no major losses here. We have a little um, bump down here, a little bump down, but it's all about you know taking profits and cutting losses quickly, and that's what we are doing, and that's how we're able to become consistently profitable. And these three trades I'm gonna review with you guys in just a second, like perfectly illustrate that. I would say almost every trade kind of illustrates how that is, but these trades are kind of funny because we have, you know, we it's a good good mix. Yeah, you know, we have a day trade win, day trade loss, uh, scratch, and then more or less a, you know, decent swing trade. So. It really puts things in perspective and uh, something i'll probably talk about a lot is just taking profits quickly you know where when you have profits on the table and your thesis is you know more or less right and everything went the right way take those profits off the table sometimes you'll be up two three percent and you'll be like you know i'm just gonna wait till it's at four percent and then i'll take my profits before you know it you're down one percent so take those profits off the table that happens to me so many times and uh I guess experience is no better teacher. I mean, it's the best teacher because after that happens to you a few times, you're going to learn to take profits. But um, as a new trader, just remember, um, taking profits is the way to go. There's no trader out there that's going to say otherwise, um, unless you're, you know, investing or something like that. And even if you're investing, it's good to, you know, adjust your portfolio and all that stuff. So um, we are day trading, we're swing trading. Uh, we're not always investing, especially in what I teach. Um, but um, there is a Crypto 52 challenge that I talked about in the last weekly trade review um, that is all about investing. So if you're you know into investing, definitely check out last week's uh, weekly trade review. Ooh, there's so much to talk about. One second, a quick little sip time. <clears throat> all right, let's dive into the trades. Uh, da -da -da. So top trades and biggest lessons. So I... I already opened up these. Um, these are the top three trades. Remember, guys, you can you can check out each and all of these trades on your own time. So um, if there's if I ever go too fast or anything, you know, leave a comment below. But then know that you can always look at it in your own time. <clears throat> so the first trade was that one point. What was it? One point seven percent profit. It was you know fairly clean overall. Um, 
ideally I like to close in a two to three percent profit. So uh, the win wasn't that big, um, but you know I'll take I'll take close to two hundred dollars any day on a quick trade. Um, this one was actually kind of crazy because we really missed the big run up, and I'm going to show you guys that right now. So the entry was really nice. I think this was a breakout bounce. And the reason I called it a breakout bounce is because we kind of had a double bottom here. And then we broke out to a new direction over this um, moving average. And then we came back down and retested it. So I like to call that a breakout, right? Breakout, bounce back to the line, and then use that as a new launch pad to take off. And unfortunately, the entry was pretty nice, but the exit was horrible. Um, I basically sold when I thought we were having a fake out. We came up here and then we just crashed right away. And I thought we were gonna crash really hard because I've seen it a few times happening and I just didn't wanna be part of that. Something like this, right? We have a, um, we have a over here, uh, you know, we're generally holding our highs. We broke out, holding our highs, holding our highs. And then we have this kind of attempted breakout and then we just crash, right? I thought that's what we were gonna have. Unfortunately, the price ran really hard afterwards and I missed this huge upside. This could have been a crazy, crazy good win. Um, but you know, whatever, I'll take my $200 profit. I'll close out the trade. I, you know, um, I, I don't want to be guessing. I like to have my structure and when the structure no longer is kind of going my way, I'll just get out of the trade because there's so many times where, you know, in this regard, it looked like, you know, why didn't you just hold it? But if you saw maybe the last five trades, I went like this and you know that price can run against you really quickly. Um, it's nice to take profits and get out of the trade. And that is actually what we're gonna talk about in the next trade, which is exactly what happened. So, and this one would have been really, really bad. And you can always say, you know, cut pro um, have a stop loss or, you know, cut losses quickly. But with crypto, sometimes it's really hard to get out of the market. You can sell as a market um, at any time and um, as basically a, a taker, you're selling into the order book and you get executed um, with whatever is available in the order book but um, you're never gonna get a good price and you're gonna pay for really high fees for that. So I like to just be able to get out on my own terms and as a uh, limit order maker. Um, and this this trade also, a this trade, uh, oh, this doesn't open. So this trade was a double bottom and um, let me see if this opens properly. Okay, yeah, maybe I can zoom in a little bit as well. So this trade, here you can see, this was the last trade that we just talked about. And then this trade over here, I was looking for, we, we were holding our highs really, really nicely. And this this entry to me, I thought it was really, um, I was really stoked about it. Uh, I thought we were gonna hold our highs, kind of maybe maybe make an ascending triangle right here and then break out to the upside. I was looking for an early entry um, as I like to do that. But then right afterwards, we crashed so heavily, right? So this was kind of a, a poor setup. I had a hold through all this nonsense and I was pretty, uh, pretty nervous, but I knew we had huge support here. So we'd probably see a little bit of a bounce. Um, and then eventually I got out when we had this bounce. The reason I got out here and I didn't hold it, uh, I know, you guys probably are thinking, you know, why didn't you hold it here? This is, you know, that we have potential upside um, and we just recovered. We had big support here. But the reason that I got out is really, really simple, right? My original trade, like I just said, I was hoping we'd form an ascending channel. I mean, ascending triangle and we would find support here, probably support here, probably support here and then eventually break out. That was my goal, right? Um, so when the price went down like this and we were forming all this chop over here, my trading thesis, my original trading thesis is no longer in play, right? It's just completely discounted. And when that happens, you get out of a trade, right? That trade is no longer your original trade. And if I held at this point, I would just be hoping, right? I would be hoping that maybe um, we would see something, right? I'm trading a double bottom. The double bottom is here and here. That is what I'm trading. I'm not trading whatever this is, right? So. When you have that in the market, you just get out, right? You take your small loss, you take your small profit, whatever it is, it's a scratch. It's not a big deal. Uh, you'll live to trade another day and your account size will be intact. And that is the most important thing I could just ever, I could repeat that 20,000 times because uh, when you start off trading and um, you, you make a lot of these mistakes, I've made them plenty of times. I've been trading six years. I've, you know, I've, I've had a day trade could turn into an investment and then the company closed and I lost thousands of dollars. So it's like, you have to really, really watch out. And um, you do that mistake a few times and then uh, hopefully you, you don't really make it again. But uh, here is basically the reasoning behind that. And luckily I did get out because we had this huge, huge crash and um, that is pretty painful. So um, these, this would have been a phenomenal entry right around here as we saw support hold and we had a second dip Hey, the buy right here in the 76 area would have been phenomenal. I, I missed that. Um, I think I left 
Oh yeah, I was out this day. Mm. Um, I actually even posted about this a little late because I was simply uh, not on the computer and I don't like to trade when I'm not on the computer and uh, I don't know, I just, I just missed this. I saw this happening. Um, where was I? I was at a restaurant or something like that. Ah, not important. Anyway, um, I don't trade really often on the phone. I know some people love trading on the phone. Um, to me, it's like, I don't know. I'm, I'm slow at using it and I, I just, I have the worst internet connection always. Uh, so the worst thing that will happen to me is like I, I don't I don't see what the charts are doing So it's, it's not really my style some people excel with trading on a phone, you know hats off to you, but it's it's not for me um, But yeah, there's nothing really wrong with it. So Okay, moving on. I don't want to take too long. I think how long are we already? Let me quickly check we this live stream is 15 minutes. I, I want to finish at 30 minutes, but we might go a little bit over. My last videos were about 40 minutes, so let me let me keep talking quickly. Um, okay, so this last swing trade was pretty pretty cool. I really uh, enjoyed how it turned out more or less. And um, although we didn't get the full run up, and at first this swing trade was driving me insane. I was like. I, I knew we had support and I chased it like I, I always say don't chase the trade and I chased this one and um, I had to pay for that with about $200 in missed profits, but you know, that's life. Mm. Anyway, uh, let's let's look over here. So this is my fifth swing trade of the year. Uh, like I said, I have not been doing a lot of swing trades because I don't like buying something uh, and knowing I'm going to be holding it for the next few days if the market's going down, right? How does that make sense? So, um, you know, as the market keeps going down, I have not been doing a lot of uh, day trading. But um, as we hopefully find a bottom and have a reversal into higher highs, um, and then I'm going to be doing a lot more swing trading. So this trade was a 4.49% profit, about $500. It was also a double bottom long, um, fairly decent position size, 11,700, a bit over than my average $10,000 entry. And um, let's look at the chart. I actually have two charts. So um, one is a bit zoomed out. The other one is a bit more zoomed in. And actually, let's start with the zoomed out one because I feel like Kind of makes a lot of sense. So we had this massive run up in the beginning of was this April? Um, we're on the 22nd. So yeah, this is this is April here. So big run up beginning April, right? And then this was just beautiful territory of just constantly high volatility and uh, volume. And there's so many day trading potentials here. It was a great week. Um, almost made two thousand dollars in a week in this. And with an account size of um, ten thousand dollars, right? You have to put that in perspective. That's making you know roughly twenty percent on your account in a week. That's uh, beautiful, right? Mm, anyway, uh, what happened here? Um, okay, who had to catch my breath? One second, sip. All right, so this is where the fun happened. Um, we had this nice ascending channel and we kind of broke out here and broke down it, but then we held our support and I was or held our uh, the support came in we didn't really break down like a real breakdown so i was like this is a reversal indicator clear confirmations let me enter the trade and as i go to the enter the trade the the market literally goes up two percent and i'm just so upset i'm like oh this is annoying so i didn't fully chase it i wait i waited till it came back down about uh, 0 0.5 0 0.7 percent and then i entered the trade however afterwards it basically um came back even more it came back like a full almost three percent and uh, that wasn't too great to watch what i should have done is been way more conservative with my entry and maybe done about three entries or even two entries right and buy um one thing I've learned with myself is that my first entry is almost never the best entry. So knowing that, I'm able typically to be a bit more conscious and make better entries because I'll maybe enter only half the amount um, and then I'll enter the other half amount as the price keeps going against me. Um, everyone has is going to have this different personality, different, you know, find out what works for them. You, you obviously don't want to be averaging down into a trade that's not working. So keep that in mind as well. Um, but if your trading thesis is still completely intact and everything is making sense, then uh, there's no there's no pain in averaging down a little bit. Um, but yeah, let's let's um, zoom in a little bit. So here you can see that this is where the fake out was. Then we came over here and um, kind of bounced back up. We also had a breakout bounce and then off this trend line and everything was looking really good. 
Unfortunately, after I entered the position, we crashed fairly heavily. Good news is we found support uh, right around here. At one point, I was really nervous because this kind of looked like an ascending channel and ascending channels typically break to the outs downside. But when we had this little breakout, I almost got out of the position. I almost closed my position right here. This was really close, but um, we quickly bounced back up and started holding our highs. And I was fairly confident now that um, I've seen this pattern play out a lot of times and typically we'll hold our highs. The only thing that I wasn't seeing was any really big reversal that really held. And um, like here, we didn't have that reversal. Here was just kind of like a, a small reversal and then we gave back profits here. Uh, and then I was kind of thinking that, you know, there's so many sellers in the market right now. We've, we've moved up 300% in the last, uh, you know, three months. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of risk. There's a lot of downside. And there's just probably a lot of people trying to take profits and even just get out of their positions into any spike. And that's exactly what I decided to do. I said, decided, you know, I'm not going to try to sell on the high 89s, which might happen. Um, so I'm just going to make a limit order to get out at 83.75. And that's exactly what I did. Um, the reason I did 83.75 is because we had a few times we tried to break out over here. It didn't work. Um, but we had a really, really big shoulder over here. Uh, let me show you guys. So this is the really big shoulder we had. You can see this 84 level. We had multiple points of resistance. So I said the chance of getting over 84 is probably going to be very unlikely. So let me take my profits a little before then. And that's why I decided to do 83.75. I could have done 83.79, it didn't really matter. I just, you know, I guess is a nice quarter whole number kind of rounding. So I did 83.75 and lo and behold, I got really lucky on this trade. I almost got perfectly executed near the highs, but that, you know, it doesn't really matter. That doesn't always happen. I mean, I could have easily got out anytime over here. Um, the the really point i wanted to make here is you know there the entry was not so good and the exit was maybe really good but overall you know it was a decent trade i didn't really get what i wanted out of this trade but i still made profit and and that goes along with every other trade that i talked about um each one of these trades you know didn't end up perfectly and even one of the trades i was entirely wrong and could have been really bad but i just simply you know took profits when i had them or closed the position when the trade was no longer going my way or in this case um reassessed my position and decided there wasn't as much upward um momentum i was i was hoping for so let me take my profits let me not keep hoping that we're gonna get that momentum and uh, let me just get out of this trade and um i know i also have a busy weekend coming up with easter and all that stuff i was almost offline the whole entire weekend so why not just close out and um you know, that's that's uh, that's exactly what I did on this trade and I, I got you know, rewarded nicely for it. So, um, yeah, just keep that in mind, guys. Uh, when you're trading, it's not about making perfect, perfect entries or perfect exits, right? Uh, it's simply about taking profits off the table when you have them. And that is exactly what I did. And also closing positions that are no longer going your way. So just keep that in mind. And uh, it's something I talk about probably more than anything. So, uh, yeah. Um, Okay, so we're 22 minutes in and we're moving right along. Let's actually dive over into the charts and talk about um, BTC, USD, shorts, Bitcoin a little bit, and some maybe altcoins like Litecoin and uh, Ethereum, and uh, yeah, we'll see anything, um, some other coins maybe. Mm. Uh, yeah, we could leave that open. Okay, so let's actually just go onto the one day and start with the BTC USD shorts. And a big reason why I got out actually of my last swing trade is because we had the shorts moving up really, really high. So I entered the swing trade right around um, this day. I think it was the 16th. Um, let me quickly check weekly. No, I entered on the 17th. Okay. So I entered on, I think this yeah, this day right here, this first green candle, right? And a big green, not a big move up to the upside, but we kind of broke some of this stagnation consolidation with the shorts. And then the next day we had a huge increase in BTC uh, USD short volume. So more people were shorting the market. People were opening short positions and the market wasn't really crashing that much. So that was kind of a good sign um, because if the market's not crashing much and it's holding its highs, even though people are order, um, opening short positions, it means as people close those positions, they're going to artificially drive up the market even more. So, you know, a potential move to the upside, but I didn't really like the fact that, you know, a lot of shorts were piling on and uh, we could crack at any moment. I just, I did not like that. So that was another reason I reduced my position just a little bit. Um, let's go over to Bitcoin and, uh, 
on Bitcoin, you can see we are still holding our highs really well. And something that I'm talking quite often about in my watch list every day is we're forming a bit of an ascending channel right here. Uh, we have big resistance at 5,400, roughly 5,350. And then we are seeing uh, consistent uh, support around this line. So a possible entry, if we believe that we might have a second run up, would be anywhere along this line. Um, would be an entry for me. You typically don't um, go into these trades unless there's a confirmation of a breakout and then typically a breakout bounce is a second good entry that I like to do. And then um, uh, other people also just buy into breakouts. I personally don't like buying into breakouts to me. I feel like I always buy into fake outs and it's just not really something that I do. Um, I like to either average in beforehand or buy the breakout bounce, right? And what is a breakout bounce? It's simply the price comes up here now we break out, we come back, retest, find huge support, and then we have that second move to the upside. And it's something you find in all charts, and uh, it's a, it's a nice entry. So I don't know. I might be I might be looking for that. Um, anyway, we are holding our highs very nicely. There is um, there's also a bit of speculation that um, we might be forming somewhat, not necessarily of a cup and handle. Um, oh man, what is this chart pattern called? Um, I forgot the name actually right now. I will uh, leave a comment actually below. And what we are seeing here is basically the price coming up here. We broke from this uh, resistance, um, what do you say, trend line more or less. Uh, this is 180 day moving average. And you can kind of see it follows the trend line that we drew and um, breakout with huge volume is a very bullish indicator. And what we might be seeing is not necessarily a retest here, but a nice um, continuation from this area. And um, there's a chart that I will post below that is often talked about uh, in this exact um, this exact pattern. It almost resembles it perfectly. So there is a lot of speculation right now that we will be moving to the upside. Um, either way, I don't really have any uh, swing positions open or, and what I'm doing for my long-term fund is simply every week, I'm just putting in a little bit of uh, money into the market and growing my long-term funds. So to me, it doesn't matter if the price goes up or down. Um, if it goes up, great. Um, if it goes down, even better actually, because I just buy more of my long-term positions. Um, with day trading, I would also like maybe a little bit of a, um, a downward strand to enter some positions. But um, overall, Bitcoin, I wouldn't be, um, I don't know, I wouldn't be buying right now as, as a day trade um, to go long. But um, maybe I would be buying if we broke out, came back and tested, and then I would buy that. Or if we came back down a little bit here and we are holding our highs, I would probably start opening a position. But I would probably be doing that with Ethereum or Litecoin since I trade those much more since they just move um, in much bigger quantities. Uh, if I always say, you know, if Bitcoin is up, you know, 2%, then Litecoin is probably up 6% or 9% or something like that. So as a day trader, there is much more opportunity in trading that. Um, let's actually go to the four hour and, or not three hour, four hour, and see if we could see some, uh, any opportunities there. Whoop. Again, guys, we are in a short-term bullish rally, right? What is a short-term bullish rally? It is when we are over the 180-day moving average or maybe the 200-day uh, moving average. It's simply a longer moving average. And when we are trading on top of that moving average and constantly um, holding our highs above it and you know touching these points right here and bouncing off of that, that is means we're in a bullish short-term rally. So that is what we're seeing right now, even though right now we're in a longer-term bearish market. Um, so let's dive into Ethereum and see what we can find with this. And what I've noticed with Ethereum is that we've been hitting this, uh, some clear, clear support zones, uh, very nicely. Um, and, um, I, I've missed a few entries here cause I don't trade Ethereum too much, but, um, this $160 area would have been a uh, great entry multiple times. Uh, we broke out of it originally right around here and then we came back and retested it. And this could have been a great little, you know, scalp 5% right there, boom, bought here, sold at the other resistance level. So bought on the support, sold at this one. And then again here, if when we crashed here and it was a fake out and we didn't fully break down, we could have bought, entered the position right around here and again, sold around here for another four to 5%. And if you're really, really aggressive, you could have probably even held uh, and sold for 10%. So um, Litecoin is just making very consistent trading opportunities for everyone. And uh, I haven't been getting any of the Ethereum trading, unfortunately, but I've been getting the, a lot of the Litecoins. 
Um, I would love, love, love for my account to finally hit around twenty thousand uh, dollars. We've made huge progress. Uh, we've grown it from you know five thousand to now it's about uh, what was it about twelve thousand dollars? It was at thirteen thousand dollars, but I took about a thousand out. Um, because you always have to pay yourself and that is the most important thing um, just you know even if it's a little bit of money um, get used to paying yourself off of percentages right um, that way you're just you I don't know, take some of the stress out of the market and you get really comfortable and um, I don't know just I talk about this a lot in the uh, last weekly trade review but just always having a consistent not necessarily stream of income but getting used to um, building habits that are um, really beneficial to you especially in the long term so let's say every week um, you take uh, or every month you take you know 10 or 20 percent of your trading profits out of your uh, account and just paying yourself that way you get used to a consistent pattern of paying yourself um, it's just like you know if you're um, if you want to donate to a cause, you know, and then you're thinking, you know, one day when I become a millionaire, I'm going to donate a lot of money to this charity, which is great. You know, hats off to you, do it. Um, but what's um, even better is to get in a, a mindset to constantly donate, for example. So every month you say, I really like this charity. So every month I'm going to give, you know, 5% of my earnings to this charity, right? That way, if you're making, you know, 2000 a month or if you're making 20000 a month, you've already got yourself in the right mindset to consistently give and um, consistently kind of grow that relationship. So uh, just, you know, a bunch of baby steps is usually a lot bigger than just one massive leap because that leap could be in the wrong direction. You can make a lot of mistakes and, you know, just... Uh, get really uh, consistent and practice and learn and yeah okay so enough of that rant um again guys look at this so if you if we break out from this area and we come back here and we retouch this 168 dollar level again boom you could have put in the limit order and instantly made around two to three percent on this little bounce so it's just making that consistently profitable trade um you know having your risk uh reward uh with with favorable returns and waiting for confirmations right um i wouldn't always put a blind limit order on these when we come back because what happens if the price just tanks right what if it happens if we have one of these and the price just shoots down like no tomorrow what you want to wait for is something like this the price shoots down but it comes back up price shoots down right here breaks it but it comes back up it, that is a confirmation, right? You, you're you you're trading a support line, but you're also entering that support line when you have a confirmation that the support line held. Um, that's a huge difference between just blindly entering uh, where you think is going to be support because support is only support uh, until it's not. And you don't want to enter that support when it's not support anymore because you're going to be catching a falling knife. So enter, you know, keep that support line in mind but also be looking for a confirmation uh, that it's a support line. Um, you might lose a bit of money. Maybe you're going to get in a little bit later um, or maybe, um, yeah, you might be chasing or something like that or you, you don't have these perfect bottoms, but it's not about being a perfect trader. It's just simply about taking calculated risk and um, that's really all it's about. So let's dive into the next one. Let's talk about Litecoin a little bit and then I might review X XRP for a second and then uh, I think we'll be finishing up with this video. Uh, we are just at 32 minutes, so sorry guys, I went over it a little bit, but uh, just, you know, markets, you can just talk about them for 24-7. For it's, a, it's a fun place. Um, so yeah, Litecoin right now, uh, I was really hoping for a second crash under this level. Uh, I had a um, potential buy order um, in place around $70, um, depending on how much support we would see in this area. But right now we're kind of holding our area. I mean, our um, holding our, uh, the support is holding more or less, right? We came back here, we crashed, but the support is crawling back up. So if anything, we might have a really good entry right now and ride it to the upside near this shoulder maybe get a you know five to six percent on this trade so um, that is a potential good trade and we're seeing some support right here um, we're also coming up to this 180 day uh, moving average uh, I guess you could say it's 180 uh, four hour moving average right now um, but yeah so um, potential trade right here but it is kind of forming a uh, a bear flag and ascending channel and um, I'm not too hot about this trade so I haven't uh, done it but um, yeah there's definitely good potential upside and there's good support too. So it could be a phenomenal trade and we might be looking into it after this video. Um, let's look at XRP. There's one thing I want to talk about XRP and that is the, f oh man, I just, I can't get over how perfect XRP was for anybody who wanted to make very simple support line bounce trades. So 
we've had when we were having this ranging market right here right we had support uh, resistance support resistance support uh, resistance uh, support was broken but it was a fake out we held our highs came back here i entered this trade sold here um, pretty clean but then we had a huge breakout right here and when this breakout happened uh, what what happened we came back down and retested the uh, support then we came back um, bounced off of it and then again we re we hit that support level bounced we hit that support level held our highs and didn't fully crash and then we came back about um, and bounced and what happened again we came back here to the support level and we bounced each time I mean even this smaller one uh, you could have made you know three percent in this one you could have made uh, you know, 9% in this one when we had a breakout over here and came back down, you know, 15%. Uh, not saying you would make that percent every time. You you know, there's nothing wrong with making like a quick 3% or a 4% with each one of these bounces, um, you know, quick 500 bucks every time. But just look how uh, predictable it is and just how clean this chart pattern is. I don't know, I could just stare at that all day and just be mesmerized. It's, it's really... Um, you know, these, these patterns are patterns for a reason because they repeat themselves, right? And um, it's really just human psychology. People know where support and resistance are, and that's where buyers are. Um, so, cool. Um, let's wrap up a little bit by um, answering some questions here or, you know, having a little Q&A session. I like to finish up the video. Right now, we have no questions, and um, I know it was a really busy weekend for everyone. Um, Easter weekend was pure crazy, and um, I had a really good time myself. But I'm happy it's Monday, even though it's still a holiday. And I'm um, looking forward to the upcoming week and all the new trading opportunities. Um, I think that basically wraps up this video. Remember, guys, if you want to learn more about how to become a consistently profitable trader, learn what I do. Um, there's two really options that I would recommend. One is you can see everything that I do in real time. I have on average five watch lists per week. Um, I real time in real time document all of my trades in the Discord private trading chat room and afterwards so you can review them on your own time. And that is exactly what we did in this video. We reviewed some of the trades so you can get access to all these trades and not just get access to the trades um, to review, but also be able to compare them to each and every other trade that I've ever done um, simply by going down here and you can check out all the breakout bounce longs that I've traded. You can check out all the long trades and all the LTC trades. So you can do a lot of studying. There's just a lot of resources here for you to study on your own time. Um, you also get access to my complete investor portfolio, which I was talking about a little bit in this video that it's kind of thin right now because, well, we're in a bear market and I don't want to buy stuff that is going down. Um, I am averaging in to a few currencies, so you'll be able to see those there. Um, like I said before, Discord private trading chat room. Uh, this is pretty sweet. We talk about everything before, during, and after in this group. And um, after the launch of the last of the crypto trading course, where we got 100 students on sign up day, um, this group has really um, flourished a, a bit and uh, it's become a lot more fun. And um, and also you get access to the statistically backed chart pattern library. So every time you make a trade, I say what chart pattern it is. And then you can, um, and then over time there's statistics on, so you can see what my best uh, long patterns are, what my best short patterns are, what my ra uh, win loss ratio is on every single pattern that I trade. So that's really cool. And yeah, just to learn more about that, just go to enzo.com forward slash star trading. It's only 27 bucks a month. And uh, I think uh, there's, there's loads, loads, loads of value um, that you'll be, um, able to benefit from so yeah just go over to enzo.com forward slash start uh slash trading and uh, you'll find everything that you need to learn there if you want to build a bit more of a <laughs> what's up david um <clears throat> if you guys want to build a any more of a you know trading foundation and really learn all the different concepts and all that stuff check out the profitablecryptotrader.com course it's a brand new course that we just launched on march 31st and we had over 100 people join on sign up day um and this video is, or this course is going to constantly be growing right now it's a, a little over 50 videos but i'm going to be adding new videos to it all the time um, because i'm just a student as well i'm learning and every time i learn something new i'm going to add it to that uh, course so that's 50 courses and um, we'll give you a big foundation to grow on um, yeah, I think that's really everything. We reviewed all the trades. Uh, we talked about, you know, win, winning ratios. We talked about taking profits uh, quickly, cutting losses quicker. We talked about, you know, you don't need to make perfect trades to be uh, consistently profitable. And uh, these last three trades really highlight all of that. So again, I would recommend uh, learning a little bit more about those and reviewing them on your own time. And then just getting over to the charts and really just having fun with it. You know, play play on the charts. Uh, 
see what works for you, uh, test your strategy, and um, you know start practicing. And uh, that's that's really the the best way to get better is just um, do some back testing. Uh, and then just watch the market and, and start you know doing a little bit of trial and error. And if you're completely new to trading, uh, I don't know. There's there's a bit of paper trading you can do, especially with uh, Trading View. But what I would probably recommend before or instead of paper trading, I was never a big fan of paper trading. Is just you know trade with even a small amount of money, like a hundred bucks, because it's like having a you know a poker night with your friends. Like if if you don't if no one puts any money into the table, even if it's just five dollars, uh, people don't really pay attention to it. Um, because they don't have that kind of incentive to or just I don't know there's no skin in the game So, you know, just put a little bit of skin in the game and that $100 that you put in the in in the market You're gonna you're gonna learn so much from it because it's gonna make you really start paying attention to things like that uh, like, you know What are the effects of this trade and and how could I've, I made this trade a little bit better? So um, there's just there's a thousand ways to learn but really the best way is just you know being consistent at it and constantly uh, absorbing everything from everywhere and um, you know trying trying uh, everything you learn so uh, yeah i think that's everything for this video i will stop all my little mini rants uh hi again david uh david for you guys um he is in the discord private trading trading chat room so you can see more of him in there jonas is wondering if i am a trader Hey, are a trader? Are you? Are am I a trader? Um, I don't know if I'm reading that right, but uh, yes, I am personally a trader. I was a stock trader originally. I traded equities um, for about six years, and then I I also do crypto now, which is most of the focus of this channel. Um, but I'm thinking about throwing in some some equities as well. Um, I've been doing uh, I've been doing a several day trades on the side as well, and I don't really ever talk about them. But uh, I was thinking, you know, I might throw them into this channel, give it a little mix. I just don't want to confuse people too much about, you know, what should I be trading, blah blah blah. Um, you know, you gotta you gotta learn one thing first. You gotta and really stick to it and and um, and prove that. If you, I know some people that you know trade a little bit of stocks on spot um, spot prices, that's just buying and selling, and then they they're trying options as well, and they're trying you know futures, and they're doing all these different things at once, and none of them is really working, and that's because they're just you know all over the place. So it's really good to specialize, and uh, that's really important as well. All right, guys, I'm gonna get off. Uh, if you have any more questions, leave them in the comment uh, comments. You can email me at any time at alex at enzo.com you and um yeah those are those are good ways you can um also write me in the discord private chain chat room i see it there very quickly so um yeah there, there's there's plenty of ways to get at me so just uh let me know if you have any questions and if you want me to make a video about anything specific and uh yeah cool i will see you guys then in a future video i'll see you guys in the private discord trading chat room and i will see you next week for the new weekly trade review so till then guys ciao ciao